One day, sometime in the future, when either the descendants of humanity decide to investigate and do some archaeology, or some strange alien species arrives to our planet and decides to find out who lived here in the past, they might be surprised to find out that this planet was a planet of chickens. Chickens seem to be the most prevalent and to some extent the most successful vertebrate species on our planet. There are over 25 billion chickens on the planet right now and this number is only growing every single year. But that's of course the result of human activity. Chickens are the most successful domesticated species on the planet, with their numbers practically doubling in just the last decade. But these same aliens might ask themselves a question why there are so many bones everywhere. Specifically about 70 billion chickens every single year are being consumed by something else. Now we know it's us, but they might not know that. Nevertheless, technically this makes Earth the planet of chickens. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about birds in general. Because one of the recent studies that was released by the Australian researchers managed to calculate the approximate number of various birds inhabiting our planet. And this number is quite staggering. And even though domesticated animals for the most part represent the largest number of all animal species on the planet, with close to about a billion dogs and close to about 500 million cats out there, it's really the wild animals and more specifically wild birds that are more interesting, mostly because it allows us to see how nature is handling all of these various anthropogenic activities on the surface of our planet. And chickens in this case are a perfect example of how quickly and how effectively human activity can change any animal. If we were to look at the origin of chickens, they actually come from this bird right here. This is a Southeast Asian bird known as the jungle fowl. There aren't that many of them around, but they were originally domesticated about 8,000 years ago. But then in 1948, this film was released by an American company, a film known as the Chicken of Tomorrow. This film is now in public domain and you can find it in the description below, but essentially this was to introduce the idea of chicken farming and also to introduce the idea of growing larger and better chickens. And after this, everything kind of exploded. Chickens were everywhere, chicken farming was everywhere, and they became the most successful birds on the planet only about 50 years after. And so this alone entirely changed the evolution of this bird species. Before that, chickens were really not that widespread and were not really that successful as a species at all. Other birds were way more successful. But what about successful wild birds? Well, the numbers kind of constantly change. But before I read the paper, when just thinking about it, naturally I thought pigeons would be the most successful. But that's based on a very simple psychological concept known as availability heuristic. It's a type of a bias when, when something is available to us, we usually think that this is probably the most common choice. But that's not really the reality. There are roughly around 400 million different types of pigeons on the planet, but apparently they're not the most successful species of wild birds. There are four other wild birds that reach the numbers in billions. And this one right here, you probably know this bird already, seems to be the winner. There are about 1.6 billion sparrows in the world, which is about four times higher than pigeons. But once again, to some extent, this is a result of anthropogenic or human-based activity. Both pigeons and sparrows normally reside in cities, with New York City alone hosting approximately a million pigeons somewhere in the city. With the other three successful birds with numbers in billions being seagulls, barn swallows or just swallows, and common starlings. Which is really interesting because of these four birds, I've actually never seen the last two which once again goes very well with that availability heuristic I mentioned previously. But in this paper, the scientists went even further. They were able to calculate the total number of approximately 10,000 different species of birds on the planet. The number stands at about 50 billion birds. That's wild birds. And remember, there is close to 30 billion chickens, and that's domesticated birds. Although these numbers are just based on statistics. And for all we know, there could be up to about 400 billion birds out there. These numbers will improve with time as the scientists collect more and more data. But the interesting part is of course how they collected all of this data. It's based on this citizen science project known as eBird. And every single year this project has been growing as more and more members collect the data from around the planet. And the whole point of this project is basically just bird watching but also collecting the data and sharing it with some of the other bird lovers. This database has been growing quite dramatically over the years and as more and more people join in, more and more data is going to be available to scientists to essentially study bird patterns and to study the numbers of birds on the planet. 
And so by using the extensive data from this eBird project, the scientists in this paper worked out the approximate number of various species on the planet and then the approximate number of each of those species depending on their distribution. And then by combining the available data with an algorithm to estimate the numbers of birds where the numbers are not available, they were able to get an estimate of total birds around the world. Here's what the result looks like on the graph. With the mean being about 50 billion, but the potential median being about 428 billion. But the surprising result here was not really the numbers, it was the fact that only some species were dominating these numbers. Only very very few bird species reached numbers in millions, with the majority only having numbers in thousands. And only 4 bird species having billions. With the total biodiversity and total number of birds decreasing in the last few decades. But there were some really interesting results coming out of the study. So for example, apparently the majority of all birds on the planet live in the northern hemisphere. Europe, Asia and North America being the preferred location for most birds. In contrast, places like Madagascar Island that you kind of see right here, or even some more extreme places like Antarctica, have a pretty low species diversity and total number of birds living there. With some birds like this one right here, known as black crested button quail, having only approximately 100 species left. This is a bird from Australia. But this project is actually kind of mind-blowing. Approximately 600,000 contributed in terms of the data to this project, and the actual statistical analysis so far is the most accurate to date. But because this is just a snapshot in time, in order to see the effects from human activity on various bird populations, we would have to continuously perform these studies pretty much every year. Mostly because, as both seagulls and sparrows show us, human activity seems to either increase or decrease population of certain birds. And there's actually an excellent example of a wild bird whose numbers have been completely changed by humans in the past. A bird that's also a type of a pigeon. This was known as a passenger pigeon. And even though this wild bird has existed for millions of years, it finally went extinct in 1914. Now if you've never heard of these birds, well it's mostly because they've been kind of forgotten to history. But their story highlights how powerful human activity can be and how it can actually create and destroy a species. Passenger pigeons used to live in North America, and they used to be actively hunted by various types of people living in North America, including the natives and of course the early settlers. Here's sort of what their distribution looks like from roughly around early 1800s. But the thing is, as the immigration increased and as the country started to be developed, two things started happening. First, because of the human activity, a lot of their natural predators started to disappear. And because of this, their population exploded. They went from being in thousands to being in millions to being the most numerous wild bird in existence, standing at around 1.6 billion if not more. And pretty much all of them were living right here in North America. But they were also seen as pests. They were sort of destructive to forests, they were also destructive to various types of agriculture. And because of this, back then, in 1800s, they literally became the chickens of the West. Their hunting and their consumption became commercialized. And by roughly 1870, their numbers dwindled to the point where they were almost extinct. With the last official passenger pigeon being shot in 1901, only 30 years later. But this right here is the last surviving passenger pigeon. Literally the picture of the end of the era. This was a pigeon named Martha and it used to live in Cincinnati Zoo. And this picture literally shows us the power of human activity. Several studies investigating these pigeons in the last few decades and they've discovered that for the most part, on average, these birds existed in numbers around 300,000. With the pigeons reaching the lowest numbers, when the North American continent was covered by a large sheet of ice during the last glaciation period. But during the 1700s and 1800s with the arrival of settlers to North America, and of course with the industrial age in full swing, these pigeons, just like locusts, have literally turned into an outbreak species. Their numbers multiplied so fast that they became too widespread for their own good. But because of the widespread damage and also because I guess they were delicious, one day we kind of just ate all of them. And even though it sounds quite tragic, it's not a story that has an end just yet. Mostly because, as other bird species are showing us, human activity seems to have a dramatic effect on a lot of bird species on the planet. But I guess what's really interesting and to some extent ironic is that even though these pigeons managed to adapt to human activity and have managed to become one of the dominant species on the planet, the same cannot be said about these pigeons. These ones have gone extinct. As did the dodo. 
which also happens to be a pigeon and also happens to be the largest pigeon previously in existence, but also extinct by now. And so overall, a really interesting study and a very interesting discovery. So yes, we know that humans have a lot of effect on a lot of species on the planet, but it's also very important not to draw any fast conclusions from any of this. Just like these future aliens might draw a wrong conclusion about our planet being the planet of chickens. Nevertheless, the study is super interesting, definitely worth reading, but more importantly, similar studies need to come out every year in order to see how the bird population changes in the next few decades or so. For all we know, maybe the actual population of certain birds will once again explode just like the passenger pigeons did approximately 200 years ago. But I guess until future studies, that's kind of all I want to mention in this video. Hopefully you learn a little bit more about birds, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this show on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.